Yeah. You're right. Okay, that's fine. Good evening, and I'm going to demonstrate how to turn a wig stand this evening. I'm going to start with the head, head or the cap, and the cap for this one is a laminated piece, maple and cherry. That's what I was worried about. You can use solid See wood, space. whatever's available. The handout has a range of diameter, three and a half to five inches in diameter, and this is about two and a half inches thick. I'm going to mount it on a scroll chuck with a woodworm. That's a stand, that's pretty common bowl turner method of attaching it to the lathe. And I pre-drilled, I pre-drilled my blank with a drill size that's equal to the diameter inside the of the thread, the, the minor diameter of the woodworm. And in order to not have to screw it all the way on, I'm going to cheat and use a little plywood washer here. But this is a common method of attaching a bowl blank, so this is very similar. And this is what Tom teaches, is using a woodworm. No, it never comes loose at the shop. It never happens. And it's never this hard to get on the shop either. Well, you know, you turn it up to about 2,000, just poke it at it. Yeah, I, I've seen those guys do that. I'm not that great. I am not that great. Well, I'm, I wouldn't put myself in the class of Jimmy Clue, that's for sure. That's probably my phone ringing. No, it's not. Okay. He's got a boss that lives at home. Well, I do too. Don't want boss. All right. It's a little lubricant, doesn't it? So the first thing I'm going to do is is uh, create a tenon on the top so that I can reverse this in a bit. Now to create a tenon, I need to size the tenon to fit the chuck. You can do that with a pair of calipers. You can set your calipers to match your chuck and you can scribe a line with one leg of your calipers. And it's a little bit tricky if you catch if you catch the right leg, <laughs> you get stuck on the neck. <laughs> you will eat the caliber. You will eat the caliber. The other simple way is to make a go no go gauge. And that's what I have here. I made a plywood gauge that is sized to fit my chuck. And since my blank is marked, I can put the center of my gauge on there. And with a pencil, mark one side. I'm not used to working with this piece of cardboard on there. But this is an asset for the camera yeah. as much as anything else. All right. When you switch overhead, you'll see the yeah. You'll see you, yeah. I'll see the benefit of it here. <laughs> The downside of a Powermatic is you're a cranky wood, wood, wood turner. <laughs> Wish they, the new ones have an acne thread. These are a little bit slower. I'm used to talking to the wall and not a crowd, too. So you'll have to excuse me for that. Your tail stops not locked down. Okay. But with uh, 
was really just a parting tool. We can create that tenant. Push the button in it because he's going to be working there anyhow. Couldn't see my mark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I got a little. It's not. It, it was cut on a bandsaw, but not not real smooth. But you'll fix that. I'll fix that in just a minute. Chuck that has straight jaws. For those of you that have a Vicmark or a Nova or HTC, they have dovetail jaws. So you'd have to dovetail that tendon to fit your jaw. But this my, my Chuck's a straight jaw, so it'll it'll fit that. And I've created about a 3 16 long tenon, maybe a quarter. You want to make sure that the Bottom of it is flat, so your jaw sit flush. The front of your jaw sits flush on that to keep it tight. <clears throat> now I can remove some of this wood from the outside so that I can reverse this. And this will give me an opportunity to roughly shape the headpiece. How fast are you running the machine? You know, I wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> he was watching it wobble. Yeah, I was watching it wobble. I can get rid of that wobble pretty quick. shake this, I'll remove this outer part of the wood away from the tenon and, and begin to rough shape the headpiece. like grandma's old kneecap, doesn't it? <laughs> but it gives me the opportunity to turn around and I'll remove a little bit more wood to refine my shape, but that tenant is now exposed where I can reverse this piece of wood in the chuck. Are you a cranky woodworker, Tom? I thought so. 
probably make a motor for that someplace. <laughs> like, I, like I said, the new model, the C model, they put Acme threads, which are, which are faster, faster reacting thread. <laughs> Take note, I removed the tail stop. If you leave it in there, you get Turner's elbow. Yes, sir. If you leave it in there twice, you get snake eyes. <laughs> once is a mistake. Yeah, once is a mistake. That's right. Once is a mistake. That's enough to let me remove the blank now from the wood, wood, wood worm, if it'll come off. <laughs> haven't got quite the leverage yet. So no, I don't you have quite as much leverage. You're moving everything. Oh, he's taking the coming off. He's taking the... It's going to be stubborn. Put the wrench in the chuck yeah. <laughs> and break it away from it. Yeah, no probably. Yeah, it's going to be stubborn. My paramatic is it has an automatic lock. It has a lever. So it's a lock. This one does. You can get an aftermarket for them. You what? I do have an aftermarket lock for them. <coughs> do they? But you can see that held on that sprue. <laughs> Now that I've reversed it, I'm going to create a, a recess tenon in the bottom so I can reverse it again. <coughs> so I suppose that's like a double reverse, isn't it? Like a double negative? Yeah, it's like a double negative. <laughs> Somewhere in that range. Yeah. But again, since I since I cut this from the square blank, I've got my center marked so I can find my center with my go, no go jig. I can mark about where I want to create that tenon. Create that tenon now with the, at the right size again with just with a parting tool. some of this wood, additional wood outside of this in just a minute. But this does give me an opportunity to reverse this piece and grip this grip this tenon right here. Okay? Now the next important thing to do is drill a hole. Because we have to connect the spindle to it. So Jacob Chuck, 
with a one inch drill bit. Now these Forstner bits don't like high speed. So I try and keep it under about 300 RPMs. I don't want to burn out my drill bit. But we want to drill about an inch and an eighth deep. That's why I have the blue tape on the shaft. So that quickly <coughs> that quickly happened, and now we have a place to attach our spindle after we get it turned. Does that help? Or have we switched to it? Just curious. Does the white paper yeah. help that? Use the camera yeah. to focus on. Good. Yes. Good. Now in order to get my chuck in here, I'm going to have to remove some of this wood. And what that does is lightens the headpiece. That way the, the head, we're not creating a wobble head, we're creating a wig stand with a stable base and a little bit lighter head. All right. but I'll do that with a bowl gouge, but it can be done with a spindle, a, uh, a spindle gouge carefully, yeah. but it, it's possible. You can do, you're working cross grains. Yeah, you're working cross grains. For those of you that use carbide, it's really not a hard thing to do. But I'll, I'll use the traditional bowl gouge to Remove some of that wood just to lighten the head up. I guess I better put this back. <laughs> <laughs> See that came out fairly quickly with bowl gouge. I do have a few tool marks, and I would, if I was doing this to produce it, I'd make a couple of more cuts, finer cuts, and sand to finish. I'll take this home and finish it at home, but this is just for a demo, just to see that, just to show you that it's easy to remove that wood from the base. All right. angle mm -hmm. it's about 60 degrees every bowl turner has their own yep. imaginary <laughs> their own their, personal. their own personal angle I, I, I have a Thompson bowl gouge and I grind it the same way and that's what Doug recommends with his tools is 60 degrees some some are 55 some are 58 SWAT says 40 40 
<laughs> well, Stuart Batty. Yeah. Stuart Batty. And I got an email about Stuart Batty's class. Why didn't he just say it was a European cut? Well, he's marketing his product. Uh, exactly. This whole this whole thing of tools is marketing their product to you. But he's having a class in Las Vegas for five days. And it's a thousand ninety five dollars. Gracious. So it costs you a couple hundred bucks a day just to go to his class. If you want to learn how to do a 40-40 grind, there's an opportunity. Uh, Are they? Yeah. 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 This is a good opportunity now to uh, break, the, break this edge and round this edge off. So I'm going to use a negative rex scraper to do that. This. this is also a negative rex scraper, and I could clean up yeah. most of these tool marks fairly quickly with a negative rake. Right. And for you, for you carbide turners, this is very similar to your carbide turners. So that take very little sanding to clean that edge up to be finished. And one thing you might point out, Bill, what you would do with a conventional scraper. Yeah, a conventional scraper doesn't have this top bevel. It's just a straight face. So you have to have it in this attitude to make it work. And you stand the risk of getting a catch. These, all these guys that have started developing this negative rake process have come up with a smart solution because you go straight into the wood and it removes, in light cuts, it removes that roughness fairly quickly. So you just you end up with these little gossamer shavings. So fairly quickly I've got a, a nice radius edge and fairly smooth and ready to sand anyway. So now I get to reverse it again. <laughs> but it'll be easier this time. It'll be much easier this time. Much easier. Now this tenon will remain and become really become hidden in the top. You can look at some of those over there and that tenon disappears. You really don't notice it when the when the wig stand is complete. practice with a piece of cardboard at home. You can make it. Yeah. Pretty easily. So now I can remove this thing.
good polish there. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the that's the object of it, Pat. That's the object. Right that's there. the you, object. You're getting where you're going. That's right. Probably got a little aggressive with that, but you can see how the, the cat piece takes shape pretty quickly with bow gauge. Come back with a negative rep scraper and clean that up. on that for a long time. You get the you get the concept that it won't take much to finish that. Now if you get this far and you're using a gouge and you get a big catch, don't despair. You can recover from that. No. What you do is take it off the lathe. You can see the center and you drill about a point one eighth or three sixteenths hole in the middle of it. And you put a coat hanger in there and bend the end of it and leave it long and bend a hook on top and you take it out in the backyard and you hang it in a tree. Sure. No. When your brother-in-law or your best friend comes over for a barbecue in the spring, he'll say, what in the world is that? He can say, that's a dirt dauber nesting area. So they can get under there and build a dirt dauber. <laughs> there you go. All right. <laughs> So we're, they're already endangered species. Yeah, it's endangered species. That's right. That's right. You're helping the environment. You got the right concept. Is there a, a bit, is there a minimum and maximum of how round they should be? The recommended literature that I've read. I, I didn't read it. Okay. Three and a half to five. A minimum of three and a half and a maximum of five. Okay. And I don't know where this turned out. Uh, Somewhere in that area. Somewhere in that area. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, this, this is where it's at right now is five inches in diameter. Okay. So it's a little bit. I got big hands, but it's a little bit bigger than my hand. So that, if you think about the orientation of a wig, yeah, I just, that would drape over it. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. 
No, it didn't, it didn't work anymore. It didn't work anymore. Base is done similar. Uh, and I learned this trick when I learned how to do the, the beads of purge boxes. Harvey Meyer has a series of videos out. He's a teacher at Aramont and a regional demonstrator in the eastern part of the country, lives in Atlanta. <laughs> and he demonstrated how to do this method, and I've done it. And I've marked the center in my piece, all right? Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna compress it against the jaws of the chuck, mm -hmm. all right? A friction drive. <laughs> A friction drive, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that's safe. You betcha. <laughs> I'll get away with it, won't I? Yeah, that's 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 okay, go Don't stand in front. I know you're sitting back a row. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know why. I it's laid it aside. Jim? Let's see if we can put another duck in the boat. Yeah. 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 I thought I'd do something exciting for you tonight. <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate the plexiglass. <laughs> well, if I hadn't if I hadn't done this at home, I'd be anxious about it. But it has worked well at home. Right? I see that guy in a green shirt down there. He'll tell you all about. Did everybody scoot back? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's over so quickly. But there was a lot of. Yeah. <laughs> One mistake and they never let you forget it. Never, never. And that's why everybody fears getting up and flying. Not because of your error, because of the humiliation of, of having an error. Uh, yeah. It wasn't really wasn't. It, it was wasn't. just a minor flash wound. <laughs> I thought it was pretty exciting. Woke everybody up. That's right. <coughs> there wasn't any napping in the crowd, that's for sure. <laughs> But anyway, after that, there was there. Yeah. But seriously, we all have have created errors at times and had accidents, and that's just part of turning. Yep. But this method, no kidding, this method has worked well for me at home. I'm optimistic that it will tonight. It's not. All the cuts I'll make will be towards course, the chuck. Course, yeah. course. Towards the chuck. It's course. trapped between the live center and the friction face of the chuck. I'm not going to do a lot of heavy turning, just enough to create a like tendon. Straight in from the side? Yeah, just, no. <laughs> no. We're not going to launch anything. <laughs> Think about it, the parting tool is acting like a negative rake scraper. Now, like Pat said, you're working into end grain, so you're dulling your tool pretty quick, too. That's the other bad part. All right. But this is going to be the top of my base. Okay, so you're going to wind up drilling a hole in that yet for your spindle to go in? Right. Okay. But after I reverse it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to reverse again.
So that gives me enough clearance to reverse it now without any problem. And see, I didn't launch anything. Any real plus? Yeah. And quick. You have, you have little faith. <coughs> yeah, I heard that, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. That's why we all come here is to have fun and, and poking fun at the demo guy as part of it. Yeah. Sorry, guys, I'm going to run. Have a good evening. Thanks. Be careful going on. All right, thank you. Yeah. Bye, bye. bye. See you. Thanks. See you next a couple of seats up front here, folks. <laughs> I think the brave crowd just left. When they saw me reverse another piece, they got out of here. Oh, here's a third one. We have another one. What I'm going to do is, is flatten the bottom first and then make a recess chip, recess mortise in the base. to you. I'm not going to flatten the bottom. I'm going to dish it just a little bit. I'm going to put about a sixteenth of an inch depression in the middle so that when I finish this it'll be riding on the rim and the inter internal part won't sit on the table. <clears throat> about nine o'clock. Big pardon? Where's your flute? About nine, ten. Yeah. Something like that. And that's that Lyle Jameson kind of, of uh, lower drop the handle. Drop the handle. Shear scrape. Mm -hmm. And you get these you still get these fine gossamer shavings yeah. that uh, are just almost uh, just coarser than sanding. You see that cleaned up pretty good, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a there's a few tool few tool marks there that will disappear after I drill a hole and make or make this recess. Uh, <clears throat> but it wouldn't be hard to sand at this point. So I'm back to making another tenon. Now this can be done. This can be done with a faceplate. Uh, uh, Pat has one over there on the table that he turned with just a faceplate. This this method won't have any screw holes in the base of it, but there's nothing wrong with attaching this to a faceplate and having screw holes in it because the recipients are not wood turners. We wood turners critique each other. All right, we critique each other over leaving recessed tenons in the bottom of things and, and leaving screw holes, but the recipients of these won't 
care what the bottom of your work looks they, like. They'll make cuts the way it's supposed to look. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> if you cover up the film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. I, I did take note of that, too. I was going to ask Bruce about that. I thought it was a pretty clever idea. Make a recess tenant, a, a recess mortise to expand Chuck in the base. So now I'm back to being a cranky wood turner again. Big part? Get a rotisserie grill motor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> somewhere, in the, somewhere in the future is a remote that will crank that back at exactly. Stop the lathe before you move the tool rest. Thank you. <laughs> I did that once. See, I told you somebody'd point out my bad habits. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ken brought that up. That's for right. You. Yeah, sure. Blame it on me. <laughs> Just ask me how I know. <laughs> Words of wisdom, Ken. Thank you. Now, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but I've depressed the middle a little bit, but I've left a square face for the jaw of the chuck to seat. Okay. So that, that's where you're going to put the little decorative part in the bottom on it, in the depressed place? When I get it home, I'll probably put it on a vacuum chuck and remove this. Well, but see, you but, could, like in your Beads of Courage box, you could put your little you could. texture thing if, right there. If you had texturing tools, you could texture a small flower in there. And my texturing tools are at home. <laughs> but that is a possibility. Yeah. You could you could enhance that with several kinds of texturing tools, or I could use my little homemade my little homemade point to it. Right there. Yeah. So it's that little sandpaper and you've got you got something that's got a little decoration to it. Okay.
now comes another exciting part. What I've done, if you look at this side, I was gripping. Okay. And I was gripping with the chuck. On this side, I'm expanding into that. This, this chuck has some, a, a tooth on it, so I can do that. And this is a Tom Dunn trick right here. Hold it with your finger in the middle and expand into it. All right? Now I'm being back to being a cranky wood turner because I do have to make some pretty heavy cuts. This is not probably not sufficient to hold this piece of wood and make heavy cuts. So putting it between two points will trap wood. <coughs> time and I apologize for that. If, if anybody wants to leave, they're welcome to. See with the bowl guys again you can make pretty quick progress. I didn't quite get deep enough, I still got a little blue showing. But you can shape the base fairly quickly. options on the base. There's a couple of them over there, one of them I turned, that has a recess for rings or jewelry to make the base usable in more than one way. This one, I'll just make it a, a rounded base like a lamp. Either way, I, I don't think that there'll be any refusal because it doesn't look, the women that pick these are going to say, that looks pretty, that's what I want. No, I want so, someone like Margaret Scott. Right. Yeah, yeah you're not, they're not, they're not going to hear that. Thank you very much. <laughs> I could take a, probably take a little more wood off of that. Probably should. One more cut. One more cut. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Man, this last order. That's right.
And once again, we're nearly at sanding, so I'll, I'll bore the hole and do a little spindle turning so we can get out of here. <clears throat> but it doesn't take, take that long to develop the shape that you want. It just takes a little, little time, a little time. to an inch and an eighth so that when you when you turn your spindle you get about an inch that'll give you a little safety space for glue yeah. but we have a little space for glue <clears throat> this on here you could with a spindle gouge you could roll that edge <laughs> nice, little bead there, nice yeah. little bead on it so you could decorate it however you wanted it Start off with a rough spindle to start with. Is that cherry? Yeah, this is cherry. Mark the centers. <laughs> Line up between centers. And use a roughing gouge to get it round. Okay? Boy, you're quick. Just that quick, I've got a round to hey, stop. He's a, he's a <laughs> magician. <laughs> <laughs> Out of bones. That's quick. Isn't it? <laughs> size these tenons two or three different ways. We can use spring calipers or a fixed caliper and you can set the calipers.
So I got a 10 in there fairly quickly. Now, the nice part about having it on center is you can check it because you want a snug fit here. See, I got, I got two, I got carried away. But you want a snug fit there so that the glue will adhere. Now, if what I did was I took, I got a little carried away and took too much wood off. I could shorten this and repeat that process and make the tenon a little bit bigger and cut that piece off. Or you can just put a little shoulder on it to right thing with the gravity at the top. That's right. That's exactly right. Thank you. <laughs> so see words of experience in the audience. Sure. Uh, learn, learn, learn. We don't know how you learn that though. No, no. No. I would have never done that. But Eureka. We're running out of time and we need to clean up. But Eureka, there's another week stand that I'll finish it off. Good deal. Do you ever wait the bottom? Do you ever put weight in the bottom? No, uh, I try and keep the bottom the problem, a little bit wider. I think the instructions said about 20%. Okay. Okay. I haven't read the instructions. Yeah, that's fine. But I think if you measure this bottom, it's about six and this is about five. Okay. You know. Thank you very much, and I appreciate your attention and your, your assistance. Thank you very much.